Here. Mr. Harrison? Here. Mr. Greenspan? Mr. Greenspan is absent. Mr. Germano? Here. Ms. Simon? Ms. Simon is absent. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, has there been anybody signed in for public uh, comment related to the agenda? No, Mr. Chair. No one has signed in. Did anybody even show up related to the agenda? No. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Uh, we have uh, minutes from the November 2nd meeting. Uh, has everybody had a chance to look at them? Move to approve. Been a motion. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of the minutes say aye. 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 So it was unanimous, so the minutes have been approved. Uh, matters relating to the committee, if we could please read it into the record. Ordinance 2015-0015, enacting section 208.03 of the Cuyahoga County Code to establish a Cuyahoga County Healthier Buckeye Council. And is there anybody here uh, to speak on this? It looks like Mr. Kelly, so I will assume that you are. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Councilman. Um, the reason why we're here today is because we're seeking your approval to establish the Cuyahoga County Healthier Buckeye Council uh, and to have the Economic Development Commission serve as that council. The purpose is to establish a council that the county can use to pursue grant funds from the state for, uh, but to do so without creating another committee or another commission that would have to be staffed, get appointees, managed, etc. cetera. Um, Ohio Revised Code 355.03 provides that healthier Buckeye councils, such as the one proposed, shall promote optimal health in all respects for the county. It includes uh, physical health, mental health, but also, interestingly, employment and housing. Um, a council is required to successfully receive an award from about $12 million that the state legislature has allocated for 2016. We'd like to have one in place before ODJFS will put out an RFP for proposals, which would be in the March of 2016. We chose the Economic Development Commission because it meets the requirements of being external to the county and being multidisciplinary, but then also we think it will provide a competitive advantage in that it represents leaders of the business community, public sector, nonprofit space, and others. Uh, once established, the council has to um, develop a plan to meet their objectives, which we do through the economic development plan. It must meet at least once a year, and we're scheduled quarterly. Submit an annual report. That effort would be staffed within the county and existing resources. But most importantly, apply for and receive grant funds from the state. I mentioned that ODGFS will be issuing their RFP in March, so it'll be at that point that we'll be able to respond to how we pursue, how we intend to pursue using the Healthier Buckeye Council to compete for and hopefully win grant funds from the state. Are there questions from the council, council members? The committee members. Gary, hearing none from the committee members, I chair will ask, what uh, sign in do we have or sign up do we have that these nine members are going to to agree to be on something different than what they signed up for? Our hope is is that the council will not have additional work, but instead will acknowledge the utility of the application that we propose at the end of first quarter, approve it as part of their ordinary course of business for the Economic Development Commission, and then we apply and receive the funds. Okay, that, yeah, I, I understand the process to which yeah. you're, you intend to use the committee, but what if, I mean, what these nine folks were is they were signed up, seven of which were specifically by charter, by name, by their title within the organization. Um, what says that somebody from, and I'll just pick a name out of it, the Port Authority says they want to be on this healthy Buckeye uh, Council uh, because it's what it sounds like. It's they're going to be in a dual status. You're not using Economic Development Commission per se. You're creating a dual status, aren't you? Because you have to, this has to be created in a, in a, as a named entity, named organization, doesn't it? Uh, that, that sounds correct. Uh, I don't know what we would do in that case. The reading of the Ohio Revised Code would allow us, if, if necessary, 
um, any member of the commission could step down and we would still be in compliance with the Ohio Revised Code. Okay. So they could remove themselves. This is something obviously we're gonna have to talk to the commission about before they become members of the Healthy Buckeye Council. But first, we need the council established. I would assume that all we're saying is we're gonna use, we're gonna suggest the same names be adopted to create the council, uh, the Buckeye Council, as opposed to saying that the Economic Development Commission is the Buckeye Council. Is that um, more looking to legal as to whether you would, if, uh, I sit on different boards and the one board would meet, the other would technically gavel the meeting closed and the next one would start instantaneously right afterwards, assuming everybody wanted to, to be serve on both, both bodies. Um, so <clears throat> So the way to resolve that is potentially maybe there's somebody on the Economic Development Commission that doesn't want to be on the Healthier Buckeye Council. They could just re resign from or choose not to be on the Healthier Buckeye Council. Uh, but we're presuming that most of the folks that are on that council uh, on the current Economic Development Committee will want to be on the council because they sort of have uh, similar goals. But to the extent somebody doesn't want to be on the Healthier Buckeye Council, we will not be forcing them to. They can step down from that role. So that's how that would get resolved. Okay. And would, it, would it be a separate meeting then? I, 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 it, it, it could be, and we presented it in the legislation, that it could just be a committee. So, you know, you could have a meeting, uh, Economic Development Committee meets today, and then we have, you know, a committee that meets, uh, you know, they meet today at 3 o'clock, and then the committee can meet at 4 or something like that. Okay, does it create um, a public, do you have that public would, issue? You, can you, you can you say that the meeting starts at 3 o'clock and if the other meeting ends at 3.58, can you start the meeting? Or, uh, I mean, unfortunately, most of these public meetings that we've, we've run into, you have to have a fixed time. One starts at 3, the next one starts at 4. Uh, and so to give the public adequate notice, as opposed to saying the meeting would be immediately following the other meeting. I mean, I, I can imagine somebody being on one and you got to sit there half an hour while they while they comply with the 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 time or the public notice Ugh. it'd be really right. awkward Ugh. right and the buckeye yeah. uh council only has to meet once a year so to the extent uh they do what the academic development commission does which is meet i think four times a year or so uh they'd be doing more than what the statute allows and there's certainly nothing wrong with you know and we've tasked the economic development commission with the ability to uh, ensure that the, the Healthy Buckeye Commission does all the things they're required to do per statute. So uh, meeting times, that kind of thing, they could certainly discuss. And if they wanted to have it after uh, their, their meeting, uh, Economic Development Commission meeting, they could do it that way. If they wanted to do it a different way, they could do it a different way. Could they have it at the same time? They could. They could, could you gavel two it, meetings immediately? They could do so it at the same time. Okay. As long as legal says you can have a gavel the meeting of both meetings and they're going to be jointly held, I think you'd, you wouldn't be upsetting nine members of the group. But if they have to, if one has to start at three and you have to fix a time, it just would be really uncomfortable because these are people doing important things as far as heads of their GCP and Port Authority and stuff like that. Theoretically, the mayor's there, the council, uh, you know, the county executive's there. Um, Right. Uh, if you can double check that, I, I, I think that would at least help administratively. If you could gavel both meetings to start and you pick up the business, uh, I serve on some boards that are jointly, uh, that are interlocking boards, and they, that's one of the ways they do it. You, you absolutely could do it that way. Okay. And, you know, I just don't know how the Economic Development Commission will choose to do it. I think most likely they'll want to do it efficiently and probably do it at the same time. Yeah, well, as opposed, <laughs> if you have them back to back, it would be really tough because if you got to post, if you have to post a public time for both meetings, because you don't want to have, because what's going to happen? I can, I can, I can just see the exit signs lighting up as people walk out. Oh, we got enough for quorum. I'm leaving. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you lost the toss. You got to be the one. You got to be the fifth vote that stays this this meeting. Uh, well, okay, um, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, I'd just like to add uh, some comment to this. Uh, I've served on two different situations where the the same participants uh, were the participants in the, the secondary. Uh, one was in public, the other one was in uh, civic. The uh, Parma Area Chamber of Commerce has a board of directors 
and there is also a, a Parma Area Chamber of Commerce uh, Charitable and Educational Foundation that uh, is made up of the board of the Chamber of Commerce. And the practice that we had over the years is at the conclusion of the Chamber of Commerce board meeting, then we'd have call to order, roll call the whole bit, separate minutes uh, on the uh, charitable and educational charitable foundation. In, in public life, the uh, Parma City Council also serves as Parma Public Housing Agency. And uh, same, same thing, it's uh, the same members, uh, separate minutes, separate call to order, but they would be at the same, same time. So it would be at the completion. Uh, well, generally, public housing went before the, the council council meeting. So, But you have to fix it. The, the non-public meeting, uh, you could have one where you say, subsequent to this one, the meeting will immediately follow. Uh, but on the public side, you got to give the, the, the public notice out there under the sunshine stuff. And yeah, well, and in, in, in the case you of... It, unless you can do it simultaneously. If you do them simultaneously, then... Then we're good as gold as far as from that standpoint. Well, actually, I think the notice was that the Parma City Council will uh, convene at at the end of the public housing session. So you sent notice of of when one was starting and the second one would be right after. As long as legal's happy with that, I've we, we've we've run into that problem trying to create back to back meetings before, and we actually always had to fix a time. If we don't have to fix the time, that whatever you whatever you folks are happy with, because uh, I don't think you'll have any resistance from from the members. Is there any possibility of any awards that they're going to be voting on that's going to create a conflict for any of the nine members, for Port Authority, for GCP, for um, Harriet Applegate on with uh, you know labor contracts? Is there any of those four areas that you talked about that that somebody might be touching up? We'll be in a better position to answer the question once we see what ODGFS puts out for an RFP. Okay. Well, that's if I'm a if I'm a board member, I'm going to be asking that question. Do I have a conflict? No, I have to recuse myself. Um, puts me in an awkward spot. That's the only reason. That's the only thing I think somebody might might ask. Um, any other questions or anything else? This looks like it's pretty pretty perfunctory. How old is it? How long ago has this been established? This Healthy Buckeye last year. That was created by federal, state? state legislature. In their wisdom. What is that? In their wisdom. And this is just to give money away for the for these these four areas of focus. Part of the be aware of genesis was experience gifts, uh, helping to identify areas of overlap to try to reduce the cost of government, and so I think that was why it got passed by the legislature. So tell me, give me the background as to how this is going to reduce cost. What, what's, what are they trying to do? I mean, is there some, some consolidation? Is there something going away as a result of creating this new one? I can't speak knowledgeably on that or for them. I mean, how does it reduce cost difficult. to create another organization? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. This is, this is within all 88 counties, I assume, right? Yep. Yeah, that reduces cost. <laughs> is there another? Is, are these funds that are coming out, are they... Prescriptive to, that could have could just as easily be going or have been going to other uh, other avenues to get to whatever their intended purposes. It's understanding that um, the Healthier Buckeye Council will receive awards up to twelve million statewide, and so we don't want to be in a position where we can't compete for those funds. That where those funds come from or where they might otherwise be spent, I can't speak knowledgeably. This is one. Twelve million dollar fund, or is this multiple twelve million dollar funds I coming? Twelve million and sixteen for for the entire state. Yes. Oh, well, this is... we also. <laughs> this is, well, the thought kind is of... that there will be a number of counties or entities that aren't don't have a council established and won't be able to compete. So our hope is is that we'll be included among the universe of those that can. Hmm. Okay. And what's the amount a county? Is there a max the county could receive? It doesn't say. Is there a competitive process? Yes. One? Okay. okay. Competitive RFP process to ODJFS. And who is actually deciding 
what what the twelve million dollar distribution is going to go? I don't know. Well, this is pretty tightly wrapped up in it. It's probably decided. Huh? It's probably decided, but they're waiting. <laughs> I, I guess I'm shocked, as, as they say in Casablanca. Uh, so, all right, there's nothing really. I mean, why does this end up in economic development? Is, is, there, is there some economic development component to it? Because the Economic Development Commission oh, is, a, is okay. a vessel for it. Okay, so that's 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 the only reason why. Is, mm -hmm. Okay, there, there's there's no real driver to job creation to this thing, it sounds like, or anything like that. Part of the way that the legislation defined health included employment and housing. And so because of those facets, we wanted to make sure that we took a, an approach that might be different than a lot of other counties or a lot of our competition would take. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? I'm trying to f figure out some way of getting some meaning to the thing out of this hearing, <laughs> but other than just the slap of the gavel. Anybody else? No? All right. Well, um, is there a motion to put this before the council for, do you need anything faster than second reading? Okay. It's been moved? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of uh, creating the Cuyahoga County Healthier Buckeye Council as a subset uh, within or aligned with the uh, the uh, Economic Development Commission, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, we now move for a second reading. Oh, that was pretty exciting. Um, any miscellaneous business? Hearing none. Is there any other public comment? Oh, they're just waiting to come in. Nope, they didn't just, okay. Everybody adjourn the meeting. Sorry about all my sarcasm.